definitely a sense of third world tribal people, you know, still with, uh, you know, with, the, with tribal customs very strongly imprinted on everybody and they're walking around with their costumes or whatever. And, costumes. Uh, and, uh, but almost with this, like, uh, this was the, this was the big city for them kind of thing, you know, and it, it was like kind of like a, yeah, yeah. a dusty with like a pall hanging over it, it you know, pall. a pall is like a, it's like a, a kind of a gray, dusty cloud. Um, it's, that much dust. Well, a pall is sort of a suggestion of, it's a, it's a mood and it's also a, uh, is it P-O-L? It's P-A-L-L. Okay. And it's, it's sort of a mood and a, um, a, a hanging cloudish type of thing. So okay. It's, okay. Um, I don't know. It was strange. It was like another world, in a way. And but you know, it had it had this this slight bit of vibrancy to it because it seemed like the people really thought that they were in the center of the world. Because in their world, this was the place. So anyway, it was interesting. So I spent two nights there, and you know, it's all tea and and milk, and you get these. Uh, you get a plate full of like lamb ribs or something, and you just you get it, hold it one hand, hold the meat with one hand. You bite with the other hand, you get a knife, and you just go like this. Like, like kebab? Kind of like a kebab, but you're just you're just biting on the meat on a, on a bone and just then right. just cutting it. With meat. And um, so that was two days, and then we went through Siberia, and uh, they were selling all of the food off the train through the went through the caboose window or whatever in the black markets and the, and the stations. So you got all these Russians, the, you know, women in the big skirts and the handkerchiefs and the boots, buying the bread or whatever. So we had, we were on the train for a week to get to Moscow, and uh, all they had was borscht and vodka because they sold everything else. I tried to, uh, I tried to read War and Peace. I thought I was going to do the whole week long through wow. Siberia and read wow. War and Peace. That would be a, that would be a thing. I got like halfway through. That's I mean, you got lots of time where you're watching just endless steppes or endless birch yeah. forests or endless farmland, endless woods. And then when I got to Moscow, I'll wrap this story up quickly. Um, when I first get off the train and these three really dangerous looking dudes came up to me, you know, sell your blue jeans, sell your blue jeans, sell your shirts, blah, blah, blah. And man, they scared the shit out of me. And I probably figured they were probably underground police or something. I said, no, 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 no. I got a backpack. And uh, so I go to the hotel, and then I come on out of the hotel the next day, and there's this kid. He's probably a college-age kid. And he kind of follows me for a while, right? And I'm aware that he's following me, but he's just like, you know, like this. So he finally comes up to me, and he starts a little really kind of awkward conversation in English, sort of stilted English. And then he kind of goes, you know, you sell? Right? And he was so damn nervous that I felt safe. You know, he could have been putting on a show, but my assessment was that he was so damn nervous that if he, that if he hadn't thought of it, I was okay, I was okay because it was not, if he hadn't thought of it, it wasn't there, you know? And um, so just out of curiosity, I said, how much? And he, he said like uh, 150 rubles, right? So I go, okay. So I said, okay. I said I got I got two more three three more pairs of jeans and like a couple t-shirts, right? So I go, how do you want to do it? You know, whatever we conveyed, and he goes, tomorrow meet me at this place. So we go and I, I go there, you know, and I've got my like a shopping bag, and he's he's over there, man. He's just like looking around, looking around, looking around. I mean, he waits like 20 minutes. He knows I see him, but he waits 20 minutes. And I go, man, if if we're if we're not clear when he's done, I, I there's nothing, you know. I figured it was as safe as I was gonna get, so I got like $800 worth of rubles out of it, and you can't take them out of the country. So again, you go to you go somewhere, and there's no food in the restaurants because they're selling they sell it out the back door at the black market. They just make more money doing that than selling it in the restaurant. So all you've got is well, uh, where's the police on that? They're just not around, or the black market is just such a system because it, everybody else has to wait in line for like a loaf of bread, you know, and maybe the, only the first third of the line actually gets bread. Are the people that no, I don't I don't know if you were. If you if you could know since you were born, are, are the people that sell the stuff on the block are they scared? Are they do they uh, is there like security about it? Um, I, I don't know. 
you know, I imagine that they were just were just had figured out a way to get to get around the system. I mean, you know, it's such an impressive I mean, I, system. I, I guess if you do it every time you go through, like the train thing, if you do it every time you go through, then yeah, you know that, right? And you know, I think everywhere where you've got such intense oppressive systems, it just becomes this other entity, this underground entity. But yeah, they, I'm sure they were afraid. If they got busted, I'm sure they could go away forever. Yeah. So, so there was no food in the restaurants except for. You could get a bowl, like a breakfast cereal bowl size of caviar wow. for like five rubles and a bottle of champagne for five rubles. That's so, completely useless. But So for a month, man, I had to, and I had to burn through my rubles. So I ate champagne and caviar for like, I don't know, three I weeks. caviar. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like I didn't enjoy it that much. It's, what, uh, what do you think of it? It's delicious. I mean, I, I like, it's like, yeah. uh, it's, do you like sushi? I haven't had good sushi. Oh, okay. I, guess, so. I mean, it's essentially I, I fish eggs, and it's. I, I could imagine liking very good sushi, but like. The, I mean, it's very clean. Just the idea in general, I don't know if I'd like. Yeah. That. Um, Caviar is very clean tasting. Well, no, it's uh, it's it's kind of salty tasting. Well, it comes. But I don't know. It's a taste I like. Okay. And. Uh, but you know, the point of really is that you know caviar is this thing that's really expensive, and you know, and when you yeah, get it, yeah. you get it in a can like this, and it costs like 150 dollars here. And I was having breakfast-sized bowls of it for right. like yeah, five know, rubles, and champagne, because that's all there was. I know. And uh, man, so traveled around Russia a little bit for months, and then got back on the train, went through Eastern Europe, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, went down into Greece. Camped out on the beaches down there for a while. Went up to Italy. Anyway, um, that's how I got to Mongolia. So I did that for another half year before I finally one day just said, I'm done. I got to go home. Went to. Now, uh, now, how did you get money for all this? Did you just blow through all your money? or? Okay, well. Did you uh, work? Uh, how much did it cost? I worked when I was in China. I worked. Uh, there was a. I tutored uh, Japanese diplomats in English. Okay. And I, they were paying, I don't know, something like $15 an how, hour. How did that go? How did that go? Well, there was an American who had been there and was leaving when I came, when I showed up. I mean, that, like, like, how did you do at it? Was it, was it easy? Did oh, you, you think I mean, you did a good job? Were you bad? I made it up. Did they have not, did they not have, uh, was there not that much competition anyway? You were the only Yeah, there was, there was, I mean, there were other Americans there. So that really, all they wanted was somebody to teach them how to speak, you know. And what did you do? Did you just have try and have conversations? Did so, you well, do it really formally or? Well, no. I mean, like I didn't, you know, I never taught English before, but like they would, there were three guys, and I would, you know, either go to their apartment or we'd meet somewhere, and I'd think of something to do for that for that day, you know, something to read, maybe some literature, maybe so one I just have them read it for the pronunciation. So then I started asking them what they what they mean, what they, what they think it means, and. You know, then we can get into a conversation. And some of them, they didn't really like the stretching into, you know, what you, what do I think about this? They just wanted me to t teach them phrases that they could use in certain situations. Okay. So, you know, that's not hard. Yeah. And then others where they just, you know, they wanted to be able to pronounce certain things or learn vocabulary. They wanted to have a bigger... So there's three of them and they're paying me pretty well. So, you know, it's like three hours a week I'm doing that. I meet with each of them one hour a week kind of a thing, or maybe two hours. And, I, again, nowhere to spend the money. Wow. And so then... Um, because of this, because it was China, my father's an Asian his, history thing, he, he agreed to pay for two years of tuition at this language institution, right? And because I was there for the, I was stay there for the year, and then I go, I think I want to stay for a second year, and he goes, okay. And, uh, um, you know, and he's probably, he's probably a political, my father is, he professes to leftist politics while being uh, naturally tyrannical authoritative okay um so it's like a it's like a big that front seems, he that likes seems a bit different from you yeah i'm i'm sort of uh, turned into anti-matter um because i hated what he did so much um anyway so he, he agreed to let me have you know a second year in this exposure to the you know the way the world should be kind of thing and uh so the second year, I just instead of paying my tuition the second semester, the second semester, I said I'm going to Europe with this money. So I took that money and the money I made, and then I backpacked. What I mean, I lived on like, that? huh? What did you think of that? Well, he didn't see me for six months. 
until you just saw I mean, that he didn't, he didn't see me for almost a year, yeah. I mean, did you did you sort of burn the bridge there, or, or what? I didn't burn the bridge. He didn't know for a long oh, he time. he didn't know. Okay. I mean, he thought I was in China <laughs> for the six months. Okay, I And you. I was in Europe for six months, and then I was, and then I finally said, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to Europe. And uh, so he goes, well, I'm not paying for that. And I said, you know, I got it covered. And I had friends from where I went from being in China, those people from all over. I had friends throughout Europe. So, you know, now I'm going to visit them. They're visiting their parents or their friends. I got a place. I'm living on like, like maybe a buck fifty a day, right? I'm sleeping on rooftops. I'm sleeping on beaches. I sleep in backyards. I got a sleeping bag and a backpack. How was that? It was great. You know, I just go into the, lo the local market. So I just looking back now, you still think it was great? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, there was no crime. There was nothing, you know, and I just would visit people. And if they didn't know somebody, they'd go, I'm going here. They'd go, oh, let me call a friend. Or, or I'd just go up to somebody, you know, say, can I give you, you know, 50 cents if I sleep on your roof or in your backyard? Or, or i just sleep on the beach. I did get robbed once on the beach. How was that? Uh, I, what was worse? was I didn't really have much and they, they took a camera. I think that's what they took because they didn't take my backpack. They just took a camera. Yeah, that's my problem. And uh, um, what was, was the worst part was that one night on the beach, um, my blanket came off and I got bit by so many, I don't know how many mosquitoes. I had a hundred uh, bites just between my wrist and my elbow. My yeah. whole body was on fire from mosquito toxin. And, yeah, I've had that happen. And it was really hot. Yeah. Summertime in Greece. Yeah, in, in Thailand during the hot season, I, I, I counted all the bites. I, I think I had 88 yeah. at, at one time. And, uh, you know, your clothes rub against yeah, it, and you're yeah, sweating, yeah, and it right. stings, yeah, and you scratch. Yeah. And then, and then you, you, you endure, and you endure, and then finally you just go, ah! It's like sex or something, right, you know? Right, right. And then, of course, it's all on fire again, you know? And the, yeah. only, the only solution I found was salt water to go in the ocean and burn, burn it away. And it would, it would not itch for a while. And, uh, anyway... So then I went to Italy for a couple months. Uh, I went up into France for a month. So how did you uh, How did you bathe? Same Pretty much in the ocean bathe? or rivers. Only in the ocean. Or, or I would I would go someplace and like pay for a little shower or something or, okay. or somebody's hose. You know, or just well water, old style. You know, poured over my head and. Um, did you use soap? Yeah, I had soap. Okay. Okay. I mean, all you needed was I had a little camping stove. I had like a, two pairs of shorts, a couple pairs of shirt, maybe a sweater. Uh, two pairs of shoes, uh, like, like tennis shoes and, and, and flip-flops, a hat, like a couple bandanas, a sleeping bag, uh, a couple books, you know, a couple journals. That's when I was writing, you know, kind of keep track of all my profound thoughts. And, uh, and that was it, you know. I mean, maybe, I, I don't even think I had a knife or anything. I had some silverware, hot maybe, to cook on the stove with. But, you know, I just throw that backpack in, throw the whatever I wasn't wearing, and a towel. I had a towel. And that was it. I could just go anywhere. I could just pick up and go anywhere based on whatever happened to me that day. So the whole experience, the whole China experience and the whole traveling afterwards, that was... When I came back here, and then I went to, back to UC Berkeley, and, you know, they got the whole Greek culture. And I just these people talking careers and, you know parties and I had cultures I couldn't take it man it seemed like such a small view of life it was so locked in and so me me mine mine and you know my clothes versus your clothes or my car versus your car my sorority versus your sorority or 